If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the question to get familiar with what's going on here. You're going to notice that there are two collisions in this problem. There is the collision between the bullet and box one, and then later, a collision between the bullet and box two. Now in both collisions, momentum will be conserved. So we're going to use the principle of the conservation of linear momentum to solve this question. Let's look at that formula for the first collision. Notice the subscript B stands for bullet and the subscript one stands for box one. We will also notice that box one begins at rest. So its initial velocity is zero. With that in mind, let's plug in the known values and also make sure to convert grams into kilograms, the standard unit of mass. Again, note that the initial velocity of box one was zero and that I converted the mass of the bullet from grams into kilograms. We can simplify the equation a little bit by canceling this term and multiplying out these two numbers. We run into a problem, however, because we have two unknowns, the initial velocity of the bullet and the final velocity of the bullet. So in order to proceed, we're going to have to turn to the second collision. So let's bring that back into the picture. Now in this collision, momentum is also conserved. So let's write out the conservation of linear momentum once again. We need to remind ourselves that the block and the bullet end up being embedded together. We can see that in the picture that the bullet is embedded inside the block. And what that means is that their final velocities will be the same. So when they tell us that the final velocity of block two is 1.4, that also means that the final velocity of the bullet is also 1.4. So with that in mind, let's plug in the known values. Notice that the initial velocity of block two was zero, just as it was for block one. Also notice that we have only one unknown, the initial velocity of the bullet. So we can use some algebra to solve for that. And when we do that, we get 721 meters per second. That is the initial velocity of the bullet as it's approaching block two. So in other words, right here, the bullet is traveling at 721 meters per second. But now keep this in mind. If that's the speed of the bullet right before it hits block two, that has to be the speed of the bullet after it immediately left block one. That's a very important statement, so I want to say that one more time. So the 721 meters per second is the initial velocity of the bullet as it's approaching block two, but since the bullet had just exited block one, that becomes the final velocity of the bullet in the first collision. Recall that we didn't know that from the first equation, but now we do. So we can actually plug 721 into that term right here, and that's going to allow us to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet in the first collision. So let's go ahead and do that. And then another little algebraic cleanup here would allow us to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet as it approaches block one. And when we do that, we get approximately 937 meters per second. So just to clarify which answer goes with which part, part A asks for the speed of the bullet as it's leaving block one. Well, looking at the picture, that would be the 721 meters per second. Part B wants the speed of the bullet as it's entering block one. So that would be right here. Well, that was the initial velocity of the bullet from the first collision. That's what we found right here, the initial velocity of the bullet right before it collided with block one. I know I skipped some of the algebra, so if there's any questions about that, please let me know in the comments and I would be happy to respond.